Um, first of all, what did you make of what Macron had to say about, you know, he wasn't saying about NATO sending troops, but that some NATO countries were considering it. He said there was no consensus on this, but this was something that was being considered. Do you think it is? I'm sure it is. Am I allowed to briefly comment on your last conversation where you robustly defended uh, the need to defend MPs? Uh, you will, well, yes, if you wish to, start, feel Very free quickly, to start with that. Which is to say that we are desperate to get good people, and I stress good, capable, able people, into Parliament, as members of Parliament, and into government. And currently, the current uh, atmosphere is deterring. Uh, going back to Macron, which you want to be talk about, um, I'm sure people are considering it. My own view is nothing should be ruled out. Um, as he says, uh, we don't want to have a, a direct war with Russia, of course, but Russia is the aggressor and we should not be intimidated by Putin and his ghastly regime into refusing to do things. So we must be willing to say almost anything. I'm delighted Macron has, has moved to, a, shall we say, a more hawkish position from when he was actually rather um, dovish. Yes, and we know, I mean, certainly Germany have certainly changed their tune over the, uh, the, the last two years. But it is interesting, of course, it has been the Eastern European nations, it's been the Baltic states, they understand the real threat from Russia, lived under their rule uh, within living memory. They know what that threat is. Um, is there any difference between, say, a NATO member, now Poland's denied, but let's just say it was Poland, if, if Poland did send troops, not just, you know, tanks, jets, artillery or whatever, if they did send troops to Ukraine and if, say, uh, you know, Russian troops uh, and, and Polish troops were in, uh, in conflict directly and Russian and Polish troops died, would that trigger Article 5 of the NATO treaty, attack on one is attack on all, or would, or would Russian troops actually have to put a steel boot cap over the border of Poland for that to happen? Well, I think that's a legal argument. My own view is probably the latter. Um, there are probably, let's be quite honest, there are probably some NATO advisors, unquote, already in Ukraine, uh, but not probably in the front line, uh, possibly in the front line, but not probably. Um, I, I think what, what we need to understand, uh, Julia, in this country is that this is a, a conflict which affects us directly. Yeah. We may not be currently being shot at by Russians, but it affects us directly and it affects the security and the prosperity of Europe directly, and we are a part of Europe. And this is the thing, isn't it? A lot of people say oh, it's a far away war, but actually every, everyone I know with any military experience says, you know, this is absolutely crucial. We've seen the impact yep. on our energy prices, uh, 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 even, you know, just that massive impact on our economy and our day-to-day our, our -day living. So, you know, we, we're not immune uh, to any of this. We can't just say it's not our problem, but also the threat that if Vladimir Putin does have a victory there, that actually, you know, he will be emboldened and he'll become more of a threat to other parts of Europe, right. including NATO members. There's a big, you know, big worry around the Baltic states, where, of course, we've seen very similar tactics to what happened in Crimea and the Donbass region, Russian, Russian population being expanded and, oh, lots of concerns about Russian population being ignored, justifying, you know, Moscow sending in uh, troops. We's, you know, he's got a, he's got a modus operandi. Um, and then it, th these things often aren't quite as clear-cut as what he did on the 24th of February 2022, okay. where you literally just roll the tanks over the border. But we could end up facing that dilemma. Do you think that NATO members would stand firm? Because I've got quite a lot of worries about the willingness of NATO to actually, you know, not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. Well, I thought you were in danger of quoting uh, Neville Chamberlain about a conflict in a faraway country, w which we know little, um, <laughs> or whatever he said. But um, this is a conflict which affects us all, and we, and we need to understand this. This is the, um, the consequence of the Cold War. And I spent some year of my life sitting in Germany facing the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet Union um, to deter them attacking, moving further west. Putin, on the other hand, is emboldened and he's moving further west. Uh, will NATO stand firm? Uh, certainly the Baltic states will. Certainly I think Poland will. There's a bit of an issue about Hungary, to be fair, because they've been a bit uh, ambivalent. Uh, and Turkey may be a bit ambivalent too, but I think we need to understand that Putin is a threat to the whole of Europe. He wants client states like the Soviet Union had. Uh, he's, he wants a client state in Ukraine, as we know, but he would like to take back the Baltic states, uh, which they invaded in uh, 1939. Um, and we are all threatened, not necessarily threatened with a bomb through our window, but we are all threatened with our prosperity and our security in Europe. And the biggest danger in NATO, I'm afraid, is what President Trump is saying. I hope he's not serious. I hope he's using his uh, typical bombast. But if he should be elected, re-elected, 
Um, this is really very worrying if he if he undermines NATO. And if he thinks he can do a deal with Putin, which he says he can, he is barking mad. 